Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space War 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In this video we are going to begin with a Venus mission. We've had some trouble with Venus trying to get things into orbit around it and we need to do three contracts, sign state from surface of Venus, position a satellite in an equatorial orbit, and position a satellite in a specific orbit. Those two orbits are not compatible so we're only going to be able to do one of those. We've tried this before and it didn't work out so well. Uh, so we need overwhelming Delta V, uh, or of course for the surface of Venus we just need a heat shield and comms. To get comms we are currently unlocking precision engineering, otherwise none of our dishes will be able to survive entry and so communicate from the surface. So I'm going to warp to the completion of that. Now we're also trying to do a lunar flyby mission with Kerbals. So crude lunar flyby is something that we don't have the contract for because I didn't pick it up because the deadline is too difficult otherwise. So we gotta wait until we've got the thing ready and then we'll pick up the contract. But that is something I want to do. Okay, so I've cooked up the Venus surface probe as well as the Venus satellite mission. And we are launching them all on the same launcher, which we'll get to. Uh, so here we have the parabolic antenna, which can survive entry into Venus, I assume, I hope. And then a simple early controllable core, some parachutes just in case, and we've got some fuel for orientation, and a little thrusters, and of course the science, and the heat shield. So the heat shield is scaled up uh, from a 1 meter one, because I need something in between 1 meter and 2 meters. So hopefully that'll work out. We're using this uh, payload adapter as our core for this relay. We have 8 of these little relay antennae, they're not as powerful as that of course but combined they should help. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what kind of range we're going to get, but we've uh, combined these to relay from Mars before, so I think it'll be okay, right? Anyway, we've got uh, plenty of Delta V for the transfer, 4,261 I hope is good enough, but then again, uh, inclination with Venus is rough. Um, we might be able to use some of this stage for part of the transfer. I'll build two of them just in case so that we'll have backup and then edit it as necessary. But in order to launch that payload without taking extra time, I have decided to use one of the SE-2060 boosters. So this is the, SE, uh, the same launcher that we've been using for these probes, not the crewed mission. The crewed mission has two of those vacuum engines and then a whole bunch of these SE2060 engines. But I decided that, well, two boosters was too much. You can see the thrust weight ratio right now, but no booster was too little. So this is how we're going. And I've tilted the nozzle so that the thrust, you can see the resulting thrust can point through the center of mass. As the fuel drains, it'll still point through the center mass, I think, but it is a bit of a risk. So that's another reason why we're building two. So. Speaking of which, I will build them. That's one. That's two. Okay, so now taking a look at the satellite. The satellite will use the same single booster configuration, so if something goes wrong with one, we'll be able to fix it for this. We'll launch the surface probe first, since we'll have a backup. For the satellites, uh, we have to do two separate ones, so we don't technically have a backup. Um, I've decided to go with 4,200 meters per second for the satellite to capture, 4,500 for the stage to transfer it. Uh, so I can still optimize this further. We could use like a CubeSat core instead of this early controllable core. If we really want to push things, we could, you know, use a CubeSat and do it like we did earlier on in the series. But I'm trying to use this early controllable core without it taking an obscene amount of time to build. We'll see. I mean, you can build, uh, use a larger launcher, you could use a smaller core, there's all sorts of things. But I'm going with this for now. These solar panels should do, from Venus, they do 60 watts. The early controllable core needs 50 watts. So that should be okay. That's each, right? And then we've got all these CubeSat panels on this one. And uh, that's a 1 kilonewton engine there, a 12 kilonewton engine there. There, It's all MMH and MON3 here. So, yep, that is how it goes. That white thing is actually just a decoupler. So, this stage no longer has any functionality beyond getting it over to Venus and maybe starting the capture. So, okay, 
We gotta build two of these because we need two satellites. They're in different orbits and they'll help relay if they get to where they're supposed to be going. Okay, so we're expecting three launches for Venus and uh, in total the time it takes to build all of these things and we'll have to move the links down temporarily so that is our lunar flyby mission but we'll delay that and so 150 uh, 140 plus 114 so 254 days so it's a little bit slow since the window is in 245 days but that's approximate anyway we might speed one of them up so I'll uh, rush that one a little bit and rush this one a little bit so that we can get them all done in time okay we have everything built it says three days to Venus window and yeah I think last time I had said something like maybe I didn't want to do Venus again and wanted to do the lunar orbit mission I mean lunar flyby mission but I think we really need to kneel this Venus stuff especially since we have the three contracts Okay, here is our first Venus probe mission, uh, first Venus surface probe mission, and hopefully we won't have to do a second one, but we do have the backup. I didn't paint the rocket this time, and we're launching in the dark anyway, so probably for the best. Okay, good enough. Throttle up. SAS on. Let's see how this works. Ignition. Ah, we have an ignition failure. I'm gonna try and see if, uh... We can activate on the pad again. We've got three more ignitions. Okay. Ignition. And launch. Uh oh, 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 no. Uh... Okay, that doesn't work very well. I think I overdid the tilt. Yeah, I might have overdid the tilt. Hmm. Okay, good to know. We need to edit some rockets. I could at least recover this a little bit if uh, it stopped being glitchy. Um, well, let's go back to Space Center. Maybe we can pick something up, I don't know. Okay, well, we can recover that. Whatever it is. Got a little bit of funds back. Not much, though. Hmm, this arrangement may be too dangerous, I don't know. How much longer would it take to add a second booster, just out of curiosity? 44 days, so yeah, this is why. I didn't want to do that. Hmm. Well, I think it was too extreme because what happened... If the, yeah, the retro rockets are fine. Um, yeah, uh, we ended up flopping on this side. I'm gonna make it much more subtle. And that's not gonna take any time at all, apparently, because it's no new parts. But I would like to test that on uh, on the, one of the satellite missions instead of the surface probe mission. So let's edit that on a satellite mission. How much gimbal do these things have anyway? Five degrees. All right, let me save this one and see. Could be all of it's gonna be messed up, but I don't like using the sim mode, you know. That would make sense, obviously, but I haven't adjusted the cost of it yet, so actually it would cost quite a bundle anyway. Okay, which one is the one I edited? Darn it. <laughs> uh, I suppose it's the second one. Yeah, we have to recondition the pad after that explosion. I don't know if this is the right one, because that sure looks tilted quite a lot. Oh, eyeballing stuff is tough. 
This time I have to remember to just shut it off if there's an anomaly. Okay, SAS on, throttle up, ignition, and launch. Um, uh, okay, yeah, too much. We gotta try and flop slowly. <laughs> I don't know how much it's got. Uh, slow. Uh, okay, okay. I think we can recover this much. Oh no! Please stop exploding. It's okay. Stop exploding. <laughs> okay. I think we can recover the payload. Uh, recover to VAB. Yeah, actually. Okay. I'm so done with these. We're going to go on to, the, ironically, after all these horrendous failures, we're going to go on to the crewed lunar flyby mission. Uh, yeah, we'll just wait until the next Venus window and build them all with two boosters instead of one, so that we don't have to worry about this. Uh, any other bits that we get to recover? It doesn't look like it. But we had a whole booster rolling around there. Let me see if in the tracking station we can grab it. I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't show it out here. I expect that it would, but maybe if it doesn't have a control core. No, uh, there's a lot of Venus probe debris, but not from the most recent mission, so. Okay. So I'm gonna edit all the missions and prepare another one for after the links. And we're gonna skip this Mars window. We'll just focus on the lunar flyby mission now. Okay, we have built the Lynx S2 mission, and let's just take a look at it. So I'm gonna pretend edit it. I don't expect to make any changes, but let's remind ourselves of its configuration so that I don't get anything wrong. Okay, many boosters. <laughs> we uh, certainly didn't skimp on this. Yep, I expect it's not reading the Delta V perfectly here, otherwise we would have a problem. I mean, of course it's a flyby mission, so... And then of course we have the escape system to jettison as well. Uh, yep, okay, so that's what it is. Lots of opportunity for engine failures. Hmm. We will see. Okay, I'm not gonna edit that. So, time to pick up the contract. Milestones, lunar flyby, lots of advance, horrendous failure situation. I mean, utterly crippling. Yes. So, uh, and only 730 days, so we would have time to build one more before failing, if we fail this. We just need an altitude below... 5,000 kilometers, and then land or splash down on Earth. Alright, uh, seven days to roll out, too. Okay, launch. And we're just gonna put one person in. <laughs> we're just gonna put Jeb. It only asked for one person, we're just gonna launch one person, darn it. Uh, it doesn't show how much food, water, and oxygen we have. 66 units. Is that enough? I'm not gonna take any chances. Let me let me roll back. I'm a little bit nervous here. It takes eight days to recover it. It'd be eleven days. It's possible, but let's not take any chances. That does take a few units of Delta V out, but I feel better. Uh, it only takes six minutes to add the extra amount. I mean, the space is there, so. All right, then. Throttle up, SAS is on. And let me just check that all engines are what we want them to be. Okay, ignition. They all seem to have lit. And launch. Oh, oh, what, 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 no, 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 no. Uh, uh, off, 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 off. Why was Smart ASS on in the first place? Wait a minute, was it on before too? I didn't mean to have it on. Uh oh, was it? Was Smart ASS actually throwing our rockets off? Hmm. I didn't think Smart ASS was persistent after a launch. 
I didn't mean for it. Wow, okay, no, don't do that. Um, <laughs> it's keeping, it, it kept the information from previous launches, which I was not expecting. That is not a behavior I'm used to. <laughs> Smiley SS usually starts off. I think I've had this problem before and I just completely forgot about it. Because in all my other installs, and I, I use a lot of installs during the week uh, for Kerbal Space Program, it just starts off. You know, uh, on Twitch I do Solar System Tourism, I've been messing around with Principia, I've been testing out various upper stages for Starship, it's been busy, and on all that stuff, Smart ASS just starts out off, so complete surprise to see it start activated like that. On the Venus launches, I was expecting potentially it to be imbalanced, so I didn't even look for Smart ASS, but since I saw all the engines on here and it ought to, obviously ought to be balanced, then I started looking at other causes. I always have problems with the launch escape system being in the right place. Anyway, booster separation. And that's happened reasonably well enough. Okay, at this point I'm gonna separate off the launch escape system. Properly vigorous launch escape system, thank you. Okay, well, we're getting to the end of this stage. An odd combination of stages that's gonna get us our lunar flyby. We'll see how it works. G-force is a bit high here, but we'll just let it run. And separation and ignition. Okay, we've got two good engines here. Okay, and... That's good enough for me. Shut down 243 by 197, and we have 3,661 meters per second in total. So we can transfer to the moon. Uh, we'll not be able to make orbit around the moon. Well, not a very tight orbit or anything. So we want a uh, free return trajectory with a minor correction potentially. So I'll see if I can plot that. But so far, we're doing okay. Okay, I've plotted what seems to be a pretty good combination of things. We've got an initial burn to the moon of 3,134.6 meters per second. And then we've got a mid-course adjustment. Oh, the game is saving there. A mid-course adjustment of, of 11 meters per second. Uh, that will uh, flatten our orbit. Otherwise, we have some inclination with respect to the moon. So it uh, exits the moon with, some, with basically a polar orbit around the Earth. So I didn't want that. Uh, not a problem, really, but... Uh, it's simpler this way. And so we've got a moon periapsis of 81 kilometers at which we do another burn of 94.8 meters per second, which will correct our Earth periapsis so that instead of it being high, it'll be in the atmosphere. Uh, so 65 kilometers is what I have it at right now. The only troubling thing is that the time it takes to get back means that we seem to be getting back really quickly, right? In five days, 17 hours. I hope it's not too hot, but, you know, we've got... In theory, lunar rated heat shield and everything. So we'll see. So that is the plan for Jeb, and we'll see how it works out. Okay, turning to the node. Actually, I don't want the pods RCS to be running. Just turn that off for a sec. It'll be safer just in case we bounce out of the atmosphere on the way back. You know, I pick a too high an altitude. The pods RCS could be very valuable in that case. Okay, at least our transfer will happen in daylight. Okay, selling the fuel down just in case. And go. Both engines are lit. Okay, we have passed the node and we are go for staging. And staging. And staging. All right, well, we're gonna have to make sure to manage our power properly. Uh, well, right now we should be getting good electric charge, though maybe not perfect. So, but we have to watch out, how is this doing? Energy flow zero watts. 
show as being blocked by anything. It says direct sunlight. What the heck? I swear. Oh, well, there's a different... Well, that's an interstellar solar generator. Okay, maybe I shouldn't look at that number. I should look at this number. Hmm, interesting. Obviously, everything I plotted will be wrong, but... That is the way of things. My question right now is whether I'm gonna have enough electric charge. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, I think I'll take that. I mean, that looks like it's doing somewhat what I wanted. Let's see. Let's get get all that out. Uh, okay, it's a bit high on the moon periapsis. Let me activate retro thrusters that I have on the pod. Let me correct that. Those were for docking, but... Yep, I think we need to correct fuel flow. Enable cross-feed through the heat shield. We'll pretend there's an umbilical. Or... okay, what else needs to happen? Those might not be tuned to the right. No, they're the right ISP. Okay. Okay, I don't know why they are not correcting, but... Fine, I'll just plot the maneuver here to correct it instead. So as you can see, this correction here actually raises our our orbit, which is why you have to do the burn at the moon to lower it back down again, but that's fine. It was about 100 meters per second. Uh, well, I don't know, maybe it's going to be more than that, looking at this. It depends how low we want to be around the moon. I want a nice scenic pass, so... Well, the maneuver around the moon is now 200 meters per second. Which we have, but I don't quite like. So maybe we'll keep it looser. I don't know if keeping it looser will have less Earth effect and therefore be less efficient. Let's see. But it's keeping our Earth periapsis lower, so might help there. Okay, that's just 122. All right, we'll do that combination. We'll just be uh, a little bit higher over the moon, 1,000 kilometers, instead of really a low pass. Probably just a little bit of timing difference would do it. So maybe a radial burn would make it a little bit easier, but this is good enough for the contract, as far as I know. Well, our electric charge seems fine now, so... Uh, oh, right, it's sort of hibernate steering warp so well out of warp well let's see once the megajoules go away it's got a little bit of a drain 80 watts worth doesn't seem like much with an 80 watt drain we have 125 hours so that'd be like five days okay burning no well, that's not the most accurate thing is it <laughs> eh, it'll be close enough the key thing is just our periapsis around the moon, after all. It's even a little bit better for our return burn. 58 kilometers, I'll try for maybe 60. I, I'm, got, I'm fully expecting to bounce up a bit, so let's go 60. And we'll just plan for bouncing out of the atmosphere. Because I still don't have the... COM offset working to control that. There we go. Got it down to recharging. We've got enough solar panels, so there. <laughs> it just has to be angled, right? It's okay. Okay, we have entered Lunar SOI with Jeb. There's Earth. Earth is easy enough, even though it's small. Oh, there's the moon. Oh, the moon is always hiding. Okay. Yeah, we got the right vessel state. No problems, we just have to return now. I'm not bothering with any other science right now. Oh, maybe a crew report. But uh, they can't EVA out of this anyway, so... Okay, I'm gonna keep the crew report, darn it. I didn't put any other science. Well, I mean, what could we do? We've done thermometer, barometer, and all that business anyway with the probes. 
Okay, a little bit late on the burn, but should not make any difference, really. And ignition. This is actually speeding us up, you'll note. Not uh, retro burn at all. That's one reason why I wanted to keep it low. Because a bigger speed up burn is sort of ickier. Makes me worried about how fast we're going to be hitting the atmosphere when we get back. You can see how high our apoapsis is. We'll reserve some fuel to bring that down once we're close to periapsis, Earth periapsis. Just in case. Okay, okay. No, the retro RCS still doesn't work, so I'm going to flip around. Okay, well, that's the 60 kilometers I wanted. So, out we go from the moon again. We're zonding this thing. Okay, on our way back. Again, pretty quickly. It's uh, about a six-day mission. So it's sort of like the Apollo 13 expedited return deal. Okay, I'm gonna try and bring the orbit down a little bit with the remaining fuel that we have. I'm using the RCS to figure out what the best angle is away from prograde to make sure our periapsis doesn't go down. Okay, somewhere right around there. Okay, ignition. Oh, our periapsis is going down anyway. Uh, okay, move around there. Okay, I think that's good enough. Preparing for service module jettison. All right, normal. Make sure that's the decoupler. Activate the pods RCS now. Okay, off goes the service module. All right, uh, the main moment of trepidation here. Entered the atmosphere. Okay, 80 kilometers. It is slowing down, that's important. And now it's gonna slow down much more vigorously. We've got a pod overheating indicator. Which I don't like, but a blader is not a blading, which I also don't like. Why? Why is the blader not a blading? I mean, uh, on the lunar rated heat shields, they blade. I thought on previous missions it went off, right? We've brought this down before. I didn't think it was zero, but I think. I mean, it looks like the overheating indicator is going down, so at least we are not. It's not detrimental, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't supposed to be zero. I, I'm pretty sure that ablation happened, especially on a lunar mission like this, it ought to happen. But even on the Earth orbit missions, I thought we got some. Not, it wasn't zero, so there's something weird. Well, looks like we're not bouncing up. Been a pretty constant 5Gs so far. Seems like sort of an ideal trajectory as far as the G-forces are concerned. Considering we're not using a lift at all. Okay, a little bit more than 6 G's now on this last bit. Okay, we are through the dangerous... Well, I shouldn't say that. A dangerous bit. <laughs> I don't want to tempt fate or anything. Let's turn off Smart ASS. And that was 6.3 G's. Okay, aero shell, oh sorry, aero cap separation. And I'll just arm the parachutes like this. Oop. Okay, I'll arm the parachutes like this. The contract had better be happy with this. I'm not gonna be standing for any contract failure. Okay, only 4.8 meters per second. Okay, and recover, and let's just do a recover to VAB so we can use the pod again. 
We believe in reuse, really. <laughs> okay, 20 science earned. Got some... Well, I don't think we got that recovery amount. Jeb got some experience, and most importantly, we fulfilled the mission. So, yes, we have done crude lunar flyby. So, I guess next we have to try and land on the thing. Well, that's going to take a much bigger rocket. Fortunately, we now have 1.4 million funds. Uh, but we really ought to do a few other things before we take on that. Maybe position a satellite in orbit of the moon. Well, a couple of satellites in orbit of the moon might be good. Those give a generous amount of time. Let's pick those up. Uh, just on principle. We're, we're going to take some time building stuff anyway. Human orbital. Uh, low, oh, uh, that's a lunar orbit mission orbital. Okay, um, but we only have 365 days, which we can't manage. Uh, we need to use a lot of our points to upgrade our facilities so we can build things faster. So let's do that right now. Um, upgrade points. Let's buy a whole bunch. It'll bring us down to 1 million. Okay, and then increase the build points. Science points I'm not sure I need so much of, but we'll toss a few in. But I think mostly we want build points. We'll get to point six science per day, okay? And then we'll put the rest into this. All right, 5.3 build points per second is what we have now. That got us somewhat faster, but not super speedy yet. Yeah, and we don't have any tech that we're researching. Let's fix that. Let's say we were going to land on the moon. I think we need bigger engines. So maybe we should research heavy rocketry here. These aren't nearly as big. These are both of the NK engine class, the NK-15, NK-15V, except that one is Hydrolox and that is Methalox, more modern style. Um, do we have a good lander engine is a good question. Uh, this one is unthrottleable. That's not throttleable. Not throttleable. That's the service propulsion engine uh, out of nowhere. That's because it was modifying a stock part, I guess, and I didn't catch that and put it into an Aerojet Rocketdyne slot. Um, maybe it's like landing? No. I mean, we've got some engines already. We, I don't think we have anything that throttles particularly well. So we'll have to be using a lot of ignitions, but we can do that. We can land just using the ability of it to reignite. But throttling... Oh, this one throttles. This SE-1004, but it's uh, 40 kN, which is a little bit powerful. But we we haven't unlocked that, but we could. That's methane and oxygen. So that might be our lander engine if we want to land on the moon. So far, this is the engine that we've made use of for launches, this SE-2060 uh, 700 kilonewton engine. So either of these would be a big upgrade. I think we'll go with it. So heavy rocketry it is. You'll have to make sure to get a lot of data points on those before we actually use it for the mission. Lander can? I mean, we can sort of just use the the Lynx pod without the shell portion for a lander. So we technically already have a lander, but the Mark 1 lander can is obviously it's sort of light to a cheaty level. No, no, not really, because the lunar module is very light too. So yeah, let's let's go ahead and I'm thinking about but solar panels would be nice. Our solar panels are all surface solar panels, none of them extend. I think we have just enough for these solar panels. I think I'd rather get the solar panels than get more pods for now. So yeah, let me go for electrics. We should probably get some new science too eventually. 
we sort of skipped over miniaturization, got to remember that. Ladders. <laughs> that could be useful. I don't know, I, I, these are non-RO and I haven't uh, configured, those are from the USI pack, but those are very new, so I never configured them for Realism Overhaul. I'll have to remember to do that. I haven't seen those ever before. Okay, so that is what we are doing. Uh, we're, we're not going to immediately try and land on the moon. Maybe we should make orbit first. But yeah, I think first we'll do some other things and then we'll see about that. For now, we have managed to send Jeb around the moon. And I'm pleased that that went as well as it did. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments and suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.